Hey everybody, so I uh, thought of the idea to go ahead and film myself hopping in an ice bath. Not super cold, probably like 40, 50 degrees. But basically gonna see uh, how the adrenaline affects my ability to answer some questions my wife has put together that I'm not really <laughs> sure. So, uh, wish me luck. <laughs> Okay, first question <laughs> is what mindset shift did you make to finally have a high ticket offer for yourself? I was just fed up not having a offering I was proud of that I had conviction in that I knew could get results for my clients. Um, I wanted to have a better lifestyle. I wanted to create success for other people. And uh, what I currently had just wasn't really doing it, right? So uh, I think a combination of getting fed up and just wanting more, wanting better. What do people get wrong about niching? Ooh, what do they get wrong about niching? I say either going a little bit too, just like not, not specific enough. Like they're gonna focus maybe in on like, they're gonna focus in on like maybe just service providers or just agencies when you really have the opportunity and liberty to go like a lot deeper than that. So you can go, um, for, for me, for example, high ticket B2B coaches and consultants, and I even have more room to go. So I think uh, the biggest issue is not going deep enough. Okay, and what shift did you make to finally let yourself have that first five figure month and continue it? Mm. Or maybe those are two different shifts. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so I had the first five figure month. That's a good question. Um, I just decided like I was done struggling. I was done not having something that I was proud of. And I really wanted to create something that was different. I was offering a very much so commoditized service. I wanted to offering something that was more valuable, something that was unique. Um, and I wanted to create an offering a business I was proud of. So I think that was the first step is really wanting to create change and giving more was a big piece. Like actually being able to give away secrets, give away information, not be scared to give away the farm and then selling the actual implementation. So what do you think kept your, you from it for those first nine to 10 months? Crappy offering. My offer sucked. Um, and then also I was too stingy. I was way too stingy with the information I give. Um, I really wasn't, I think a lot of it really comes down to beliefs, beliefs around money, uh, financial beliefs. I'm kind of getting cozy now, but <laughs> it is still really cool. Um, I would say my Financial beliefs weren't there. I didn't think I could have more. Um, I didn't feel like I deserved more. And I finally decided that I would give myself enough proof um, to not do that. But you also don't have to do that either. You just have to decide. So um, you don't have to be like me in that sense. So what would be the number one, either like mindset or root issue or even spiritual, you know, that sort of thing, issue that you see yourself and the people who are like just starting out mm. struggle with before they really let themselves succeed mm. so oh man, that's a really good question so i would say underlying pieces like limiting beliefs in general not thinking you're worthy like really working on yourself and letting yourself know that you can't have it uh not seeking validation uh knowing that you're worthy but also it comes down to three things like you need to have skills, beliefs, and traits that are really dialed in um, to help you get to that next stage. So uh, if you need to learn a certain skill to improve your actual services, do so. If you have the wrong limiting beliefs that are stopping you from getting where you wanna be, focus on your beliefs. And you have the wrong traits, not enough charisma, you have not focus on your communication, uh, also work on those as well. So um, I would say, as crazy as it sounds, kind of like go inward first, focus on yourself and improving what you what you're eating you know your physical state uh your your mind your environment reducing distractions and then i think as a really um, natural byproduct you'll start to move forward in the right direction towards what you're meant to be working on so yeah so how last question yeah. but how did your limiting beliefs actually serve you or continue to serve you at the time they they made myself feel like i was safe they, they, they didn't in reality, but they made me feel like I was actually safe when it wasn't the case. They thought it, they were protecting me, you know, by, by having like a fear of failure, like a limiting belief around that. Um, I thought uh, by not 
by being so afraid to fail that I just didn't try, then I um, would be safe, right? I wouldn't have to face failure, face challenges. But um, can you go back to the end of the question again and re- kind of rephrase it? Sorry, I lost my mind. Yeah. How did your limiting beliefs, or maybe you see this in clients too, yeah, like what does it actually keep people safe from other than failure? Nothing. Nothing. Um, yeah, it, there's no point. It keeps your ego safe. It makes you feel good. Um, but it ultimately does not serve you whatsoever. Just throw it away, get to the life you want to have and just stop doubting yourself. You got to stop doubting yourself. So yeah. Yay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And also in regards to uh, some of the questions you just asked, I just created my new offerings course within my community. I'd love to have you go check it out. I'm